I have a lot of favorite topics in sociology, but education, I think, is my very, very favorite. As somebody who's always wanted to be a teacher, um, it just is endlessly meaningful to me to analyze society and the way that education impacts us all and what works and what doesn't and what we get energized by. And so I want to introduce to you two different concepts, two different teaching methods, the banking and the problem posing method. I think you're going to have seen a lot of one of them as you have been a student in our education system. And I really, really hope that you've seen a lot of the other one too. So the banking method is what I'm doing right now. I'm teaching new concepts. And the whole idea is that I know them and you don't, that teachers and students are opposites. And so sometimes they call this the mug and jug theory, that students are a whole bunch of empty mugs and a teacher comes in as the jug of knowledge and has to pour all of this knowledge, all these facts and figures into a student's heads. So I don't have an image of a mug and jug, but I have your brain and champagne. And so that idea of I know everything and you know nothing, and it's my job to fill your brains. And so the other thing that happens with the banking method that technically is happening right now, even if we were in a traditional on-campus classroom right now, I would be lecturing for a few minutes and introducing these things to you and you'd be sitting there quietly listening. I don't want to villainize the banking method and like say that it's not effective. Sometimes lecturing does need to happen. Does 90 minutes of it need to happen? I don't know. But sometimes new concepts need to be introduced, and that is an effective way of introducing them. Speaking of like not villainizing it, quite honestly, sometimes we need to memorize things with school, especially like basic math, math facts. If I were to start quizzing you on times tables right now, you know, we need that basic math ability going through life as adults, trying to figure out the various mathematical equations that end up being a part of life with money and or if we are trying to figure out space in a room or measurements, all those types of things. So a lot of times those basic math facts need to be memorized. Doesn't always happen in college classes, but discipline. I actually teach a fair amount of classes at high schools for Santiago Canyon College. So I kind of have to channel some of that sometimes like hey, maybe turn that video off of your phone or don't do your makeup in class. But that idea of discipline can fall under the banking method. And then this happens to all of you. You sign up for classes each semester and you get handed from each class a syllabus. You collect up this little pile of syllabi, depending on how many classes you're taking. And you have to adapt to what the teacher has chosen. And so whether it's tests, whether it's essays, whether it's discussion boards, you are required, you're not asked ahead of time, what you think, but you're required to adapt to it. So this work is coming from um, the book Pedagogy of the Oppressed. And so we had the banking method and now we have the problem posing method. And now with the problem posing method, it's, it's just so cool as a teacher. It's no longer this whole idea of like, I know everything, you know nothing. No, we're in this together and you are teaching me. And so think about this. When you are writing your original posts for discussion boards and even the comments, when you are um, writing other assignments and you're talking about how you see these concepts happening in your life, you're teaching me. So it's no longer that we are opposites, but we're in this together and you are just as knowledgeable and valuable as any educator could be. And then we're looking at things from a really, really practical standpoint, not just this like distant theoretical standpoint. Talking, we all need to be talking with the problem posing method. And so how do we do that in online asynchronous classes? Discussion boards, right? And so I know that discussion boards a lot of times can be almost feel like the questions at the end of a textbook chapter, like everybody has the same answer, like what's the point? So I really do try to make discussion boards someplace that is approachable, almost casual, conversational, that everybody's going to come in with their different perspectives and experiences. And then in the comments to each other, you get to have that energy of, oh my gosh, I do too. Or, oh, you made me think of this. Or I never thought of the way that you described this before. And I have to say, I have been so fortunate as a teacher to see the connection, the respect, the energy that people bring to their discussions with each other. So I it means so much to me to get to see that kind of commitment to kind of a little community, right? As we make our way through classes. And then finally, the problem posing method is all about 
trying to be as creative as possible and being reflective and thinking, as you've heard me say, thinking about why we think what we think. And then what can we do about it? How can we use this knowledge? How can we apply it to our lives? 